going on, everybody? We are coming live to you from the Deck Talk Podcast Studios. I am Norman Lee. This video, well, let's just put it this way. We're going to do a product video. Now, going to be a little bit different than most product videos. This is going to be a product video all about bruiser baits. But when you're talking about product videos, most product videos, they're, they're done with maybe uh, highlighting one, maybe two products uh, or baits. We're going, we're going to title this video, All the Bruiser Baits That You Will Never See Me Hit the Lake or Leave the Boat Garage Without Having in My Boat. Now, if you go out to my boat garage right now and start digging through my lockers, every one of these baits that we talk about throughout this video, you'll be able to find in my boat as we speak at my disposal. They're always going to be in there. So anyway, uh, with that being said, without further ado, let's let's go ahead and dive into this right now. Now, the first bait we're going to talk about, and this is my all-time go-to flipping bait when I am flipping a soft plastic. All right, that bait is going to be the six-inch big stick. All right, all right, that is the six-inch big stick. Okay. Now, the six inch big stick, all right, first of all, there's three uh, style baits in this series by Bruiser Bait. Uh, there's the six inch big stick, there is the five inch stick worm, and there's the seven inch mega stick. Now, the six inch big stick is my go-to flipping bait. Um, a lot of people call this a do nothing bait. And one of the reasons for that I'm assuming is because it basically there's nothing fancy about it. It's almost the same shape on the front side as the back side. There's no fancy appendages on it. There's no uh, fancy curly tail on it. Basically a do nothing bait. All right, but this do nothing bait can catch fish and it catches big ones. Flipping is all about the presentation of when it enters the water and when it falls. 95% uh, of your flipping bites is always going to be on the way down. Every once in a while when it drops past the fish, the fish doesn't get on the way down. You can get bit when it's on the bottom. But 95% of the time the fish is going to eat it on the way down. It's going to react to that bait as it goes in front of that big fish sitting there. All right. Uh, but because there's no appendages, there's nothing on this bait that when it drops through the thicker cover, you can get it wrapped. You can get it hung up on the grass. So when it enters the water, so it's going to have a smoother presentation on the way down. Uh, in front of the fish because of basically the the do nothing design of this bait. Um, there's other ways you can fish this bait as well. Of course, my favorite is going to be flipping. Uh, you could rig it wacky. You could Texas rig this bait. You could throw it on a shaky head. You could even this bait actually is so well balanced. You could actually throw this bait weightless. It has just the right amount of weight where you can really uh, chunk it out there with no weight, get a very long cast out of it, but when it hits the water, it's gonna have a nice subtle fall because it does have neutral buoyancy in this bait, but it's heavy enough where it does have a good drop without a weight as well. I um, love to fish this weight or this bait weightless when I'm fishing submerged vegetation uh, in shallower water because I can make a long cast and it has a nice subtle fall to it right in front of the fish. It stays in that fall strike zone a lot, a lot longer with the presentation that you're going to get out of this bait with no weight. Um, also, love to fish this bait on the Carolina rig as well. Okay, that is the six inch big stick. Moving right along to the five inch stick worm. All right, the five inch stick worm is basically a scaled down version of the six inch big stick. Now I go to this bait when, uh, as anglers, we know it is the bite gets tough, it gets lethargic. Um, when you get a tougher bite, uh, the rule of thumb you'll hear everybody, all, you'll hear all the anglers saying when it gets, when the bite gets tough, you want to downsize, downsize your bait. Well, I, I downsize to the 5 inch stick worm. One of the biggest misconceptions of downsizing is everybody thinks when you downsize your bait, you want to put a smaller weight on the bait. Downsize the weight as well. Absolutely not the case. When a bite gets tough, you have to downsize your bait. You make that bait more obtainable by the fish by making it a smaller presentation. It, it appears to the fish when it drops in front of it, that's going to be easier meal because it's a smaller presentation. Well, one of the one of the things you've got to enhance 
when the bike gets tough, when you downsize that bait is you you got to more more than ever go for that reaction bite. How you go for that reaction bite is you want to get a quicker drop out of the bait. So not only do you downsize the bait, but you're going to want to upsize your weight. Just for example, if you're using a six inch big stick with a half ounce flat out tungsten, the bite gets really lethargic. You have to downsize that bait to the five inch stick worm. You want to downsize it if you're using a half inch, a half ounce uh, flat out. Go up to a five eight ounce uh, flat out when you go up to the five inch stick worm. Give that bait a quicker fall because you you beef up the weight on it. Uh, if this bait drops in front of that fish laying there quicker, that fish is going to have a more of a reaction to that bait as it drops quicker, uh, more uh, energetic in front of that fish than if the bait drops at a slower, more subtle pace. You're not going to get quite the reaction out of it. When that bite gets tough, you want to go more so than ever for that reaction bite. Beef up that weight when you downsize that bait. Believe me, it works. Uh, play the numbers. and. Um, also, a lot of times you'll see me flipping the five inch stick worm when that bite gets tough with a chartreuse tip, a bright tip on the, on the uh, back side of the bait. That tip also will enhance that reaction to that bait by the fish. When that chartreuse tip, that bright tip drops in front of the fish, it's also going to create an added reaction to that tip uh, when it drops past. And okay. Moving right along, let's go to the seven inch, seven inch mega stick. Now I go to the seven inch mega stick when the bite is really good. When the big bite's really aggressive, you get a really good aggressive bite. I will go to the seven inch mega stick to try to get that one or two bites by bigger fish because of the larger presentation that you're going to get with the seven inch mega stick. Now I want to talk about one more thing that. Bruiser baits kind of cornering uh, the market when it comes to soft plastics because of the way they're doing their soft plastics. Now, and the material they're making their soft plastics out of, they're pouring their soft plastics out of. Um, today, uh, today's day and age, everybody that makes soft plastics, whether it be the big name bait companies or your smaller individuals that are, are diving into making soft plastics today, everybody is trying to make their baits as soft as they can. The softer you can make that bait, the more real is going to feel to the fish. When that bait drops in front of the fish, with a softer bait, when that fish sucks it in, she's going to hang on to it a lot longer, uh, giving, uh, giving you better reaction time to set the hook on her before she decides, man, that bait's not real, I'm going to spit that, spit that bait out because it doesn't have that real feel to the, feel to the fish because it's a, it's a harder bait. So everybody's trying to come up with the softest plastics possible. But the downfall to soft baits is most of the companies you buy a really soft bait that has that real natural uh, soft pliable feel to the bait is not going to be a durable bait. Flip, most baits you flip into the bushes five or six times it's going to start ripping apart before you even get bit on the bait. Well, Bruiser Baits came up with the perfect combination of a soft bait that feels real, feels pliable to the fish once you eat that bait, uh, and also a very, very durable bait. Now, I've caught on the six inch big stick as many as four or five, in some cases six fish on one bait without having to get rid of it just because it's so durable, but it still has that real soft, pliable feel where it's not, I want you to check this out, take a look at that. I'm putting a lot of strain, a lot of, lot of, lot of pressure. I'm pulling. I'm putting pretty. I'm pulling pretty hard on that bait. It's not budging, not breaking, not cracking. Check that out. There's no defects in this bait by what I just done. All right, that goes to prove right there. It's a very soft bait, very durable bait. And here's the thing. Today's day and age, the economy today. I don't care how much money you have, how much money you make. You know, the average person, the average fisherman today can't afford to go out every time it hit, he, hit, he or she hits the lake to spend uh, money on buying five, six, seven packs of baits every time they hit the water because they're going through them so fast 
uh, without catching fish on them because they just break apart so easy. Bruiser baits will last without breaking apart because they have that durability, but the softness to them as well. You'll catch more fish. The baits will last a lot longer. Uh, it'll be easier on the pocketbook, and you'll put more fish in the boat as well. All right, next on the list is the Mac Daddy Craw. Now, the Mac Daddy Craw was released to the public in 2020, and it was designed by Bruiser Bait Pro Brenda McMillan. Uh, hence, McMillan, Mac, Mac Daddy Craw, McMillan. All right, the Mac Daddy Craw is designed around fishing it with a 4 aught flipping hook. Now, here's a number that's gonna kind of sound pretty crazy. This bait using a 4 aught flipping hook has a 90 to 95 percent hookup ratio and that is very very impressive when you're talking about uh, one of the best punching baits on the water. Now when I say punching this bait has been designed and tested in Okeechobee. Now if anybody out there is familiar with Lake Okeechobee, uh, Lake Okeechobee is synonymous for uh, its punching, for its flipping very thick, very heavy vegetation. Uh, floating uh, hyacinth mats uh, that requires punching them with a one ounce to ounce and a half, in some cases a two ounce punching weight. Well, when you have a 90 to 95% hookup ratio on a bait that is centered around punching in those vigorous conditions, that is very impressive numbers. But anyway, use it on a 4 aught flipping hook. Um, now, I want you to pay close attention. And this is bruiser bait only. This is only bruiser bait. Pay attention to that tab at the head of the bait. Okay, that tab is there for a reason. That was when this bait was being designed, that tab was incorporated in this bait to help shed, help block, help shed grass and debris from clogging up around this around the head of the bait when you are using an aggressive uh, hook keeper. And a lot of good flippers, they're all going to use an aggressive hook keeper on their hooks. So that plastic tab helps shed that grass, helps shed that debris uh, from clumping up around the head of this bait. It helps shed it over and around that hook keeper. So that is there for a reason, boys and girls, that is only bruiser bait, okay? All right, that is the Mac Daddy Craw. And one other thing about the Mac Daddy Craw also is, uh, along with the other creature baits, in the bruiser bait lineup when you purchase the mac daddy craw as you can see it's going to come with the claws basically are attached it is going to give it a slower gliding fall or a slower gliding presentation when it's dropping from the surface to the bottom all right when they're attached now by separating the claws if you want to go with that more aggressive that more flapping or fluttering presentation as the bait's dropping you want to detach the, the the pinchers or the claws if you detach them it's going to have more of a flapping aggressive fall to it more flutter with the pinchers um, if you leave them attached in the package like they come you're going to have more of a slower gliding fall and trust me some days you're going to want to leave them attached when the fish want it one way other days you're going to want to pull them apart when the fish want the bait more aggressively dropping and it just depends on the day depends on how the fish want it that day but keep that in mind you can either keep them attached or separate them and it works great both ways but it kind of depends on what the fish want that day sometimes they want it one way sometimes they're going to want it the other all right guys next up is the avenger now the avenger could be fished two different ways. The Avenger works great as a trailer. You could use this as a trailer behind vibrating jigs, uh, swim jigs, even uh, even flipping jigs for that matter. Oh, or it also uh, works great rig Texas style by itself. Now it also makes a great punching bait, a great flipping or pitching bait as well. Um, again, just like the Mac Daddy Craw, when you get it in the package. 
the pincers are going to come attached. And again, just like the Mac Daddy Craw, it's going to give it a slower, subtler gliding action. When it drops, pull them apart. Just like the Mac Daddy Craw, when it hits the bottom, those pincers will all of a sudden come alive. Where, and again, on the drop, it's going to give it more of an aggressive, flapping, fluttering drop to it. Um, along with the appendages on the side also, once it hits the bottom, those appendages are just, with a little little bump of the rod tip, they're actually all going to come alive and flutter as well. Uh, uh, kind of help instigate that bite for that fish that might be staring at it. If, if it happened to get by that fish without eating it on the way down, um, to help entice that bite once it's on the bottom by those appendages, how they're going to move around and flutter just with a little bit of a bump of the rod tip. So that's the Avenger. Alright, next up is the Intruder. Now the Intruder is, well, the Intruder is basically a streamlined version of the Avenger. As you can see, the, the pinchers or the appendages on the back side of the Intruder is a lot more sleeker, narrower design than the Avenger with its pinchers. Um, and again, uh, these are actually already separated, but just like the other previous two, they're going to come together in a package. And all the analogies we talked about with the Mac Daddy Craw and the Avenger uh, goes into this bait as well on the fall, whether they're whether you leave it attached or whether you separate them when you're using it. So that is the intruder and again the appendages on the intruder a more streamlined slicker design uh they're they basically fall when you're uh, punching it or flipping it through thicker cover they'll actually streamline back with the bait when it hits the bottom a little bit of a twitch with the rod tip and the, all those appendages are going to come alive on it so that's the intruder next up is well I just got myself hooked <laughs> but anyway Next up is the, well, this is the intruder on steroids. Check that bad boy out. All right. This is what's called the intruder XGL. And what XGL stands for is extra glide, meaning extra gliding action. Uh, because of the larger presentation, the bigger uh, profile of this bait, uh, again, leaving them attached like they are right out of the package. Hence the XGL, you're going to get extra gliding action because of the enhanced size of this bait. It's actually going to give it a a, uh, a lot larger uh, glide to it when it enters the surface and goes down to the bottom. Uh, hence the XGL, extra glide. And again, streamlined, makes a great, great punch and bait, great flipping bait, uh, rig it Texas style. Anytime you're, anytime you're flipping, you always want to peg that that weight on the head of the bait and the reason for that is when when you're flipping heavier vegetation you're flipping any kind of any kind of surface vegetation uh, you, you want it to drop through because again 95 percent of the time the fish are going to hit it on the way down if you do not have that weight pegged that bait and weight's going to hit that weight is going to drop to the bottom but the bait is going to hang up up top in the vegetation uh, and because it's not pegged to that weight, it's gonna not, it's gonna allow that bait to hang up where it's not gonna, what you want is you want that bait and that weight to drop in front of that fish in one compact unit. Okay, so that is the reason you wanna peg your weights when you are flipping, pitching, or even casting in any kind of surface vegetation or even submerged uh, hydrilla. You always wanna peg the weight. Uh, so it drops in front of the fish in one compact unit. But anyway, that is the Intruder XGL for extra glide. Guys, you got to check this bait out. This is a big bass catcher machine right here. All right, guys, we're moving right along. Next on the lineup is the Crazy Craw. Now, the Crazy Craw is one of Bruiser Bait's original craws. This craw has been around on the Bruiser Bait lineup for a long, long time. Now, it is designed with a solid body. This bait is great for, again, pitching, flipping, uh, casting, punching, or swimming. 
with the large pinchers on the back side of this bait really, really enhances the action of this bait when it's falling, when it's dropping, or if you're swimming this bait, uh, those pinchers really, really come alive, gives it better water displacement as well just because of the size of the pinchers on it. And again, one of the original craws in the bruiser bait lineup, it's been around for a long time. When this bait was first designed, it was one of the best craws in the industry and today, years later, it's still one of the best fish catching baits in the industry today. The Crazy Craw. You gotta have these in your boat guys, I'm serious. Crazy Craw, if you're a pitcher, a flipper, you want this bait in the boat. Alright guys, now next in the lineup is the Big Jerk. Now, this is the Big Jerk. Now the Big Jerk has a bigger, broader body. Now, this bait is going to have more of a pronounced darting action. Now, the idea behind a twitch bait, like the Big Jerk, is you want a twitch bait to have a good darting action. What that darting action mimics is an injured bait fish trying to flee away from a big bass hot on its tail. Okay, so with the body of this Big Jerk, it's going to be broader from the belly to the top of it. It is going to have more of a wider, more pronounced darting action, which is going to enhance that bite when it's twitching back and forth, try, almost mimicking like it's trying to get away from that big bass that's looking at it, that's wanting to chase it down. Also, if you've ever noticed minnows that is trying to flee away or get away from, from a bunch of bass that's hot on their tail, if you ever notice the minnows actually almost like they come hopping out of the water trying to get away as fast as they can because of the broad belly on it and the darting action that this bait has, you can work it very close to the surface as well and you can hop this bait where you hop it out of the water. Uh, you want to use a lighter faster action rod again it's all in the in the way you work the rod tip you don't want to work it with your wrist you want to work it with the rod tip and if you work it with your rod tip you're going to have a better darting action out of the bait but you can work this bait so it actually hops just like uh, schooling minnows or schooling bait fish trying to get away from that bass that's that's hot on their tail ready to eat them so anyway that is the big jerk All right, moving our along to our next bait. Let's talk a little bit about the Rad Shad. Now, the Rad Shad, that's the Rad Shad right there. Now, unlike the Big Jerk, the Rad Shad has a more streamlined, more slick design body. All right, it's gonna, and what that's gonna do, that's gonna give it a more pronounced, a, a tighter darting action than you're gonna get with the Big Jerk. So it's gonna have a tighter darting action. Again, you wanna use a soft tip rod, a fast tip rod, uh, and that dart is going to be all in the tip of your rod, not in your wrist. So using a, a fast tip rod is going to give it a tighter darting action. Um, it works great also on a Carolina rig. Um, also, uh, peg a small flat out tungsten nose weight, you'll get this bait to, to dart a little bit deeper down in the water column. So anyway, that is the Rad Shad guys, a must have in your boat. All right, moving right along to the Super Swimmer. Now, the Super Swimmer is actually my all-time favorite go-to swim bait that I'm always gonna have ready to go at a second's notice. Now, this here is the, the Super Swimmer. Uh, and because of the torpedo-shaped body, rigging this bait with a 5-aught or 6-aught EWG hook, Texas rig it, uh, makes this bait very weedless. You can fish this bait through a lot of thicker vegetation as well without getting it hung up, such as lily pads, bonnets, spatter dock, Kissimmee grass, uh, bulrush, hydrilla. And another cool feature about this bait is the paddle tail. Now, I want you to check out this Colorado blade shaped tail. The water displacement, the unbelievable vibration this bait gives off is just off the charts. Also, work it a little bit faster, hold your rod tip up, use it as a topwater bait. Working it or burning it along the surface with that uh, Colorado shaped tail, almost give it like a buzz bait effect on the surface. Slow it down, work it below the surface, slow roll it. Works great both ways. But that's the Super Swarmer, guys. Alright, next in the lineup is a Super Swimmer Junior. 
The Super Swimmer Junior is actually a scaled down version of the Super Swimmer. And as you can see, that's the Super Swimmer Junior right there. Now the Super Swimmer Junior, you can use this bait by itself as a scaled down, uh, smaller version of the Super Swimmer as a swim bait. But my favorite way to use this bait, of course, is going to be a trailer. I like to use this bait as a trailer on your vibrating jigs, uh, swim jigs, uh, spinner baits, a any type of a any type of a blade stall uh, cranking moving bait. Use the Super Swimmer Junior as a trailer. Works very well. So the Super Swimmer Junior, guys, an unbelievable trailer. All right, let's start with the trailers and talk a little bit about the Evil Twin. Now, this here is the Evil Twin. Now, I want you to pay close attention to the way this bait's designed and the twin tails on this bait, the way they're designed, the way these, these tails are just going to come alive when you're using it as a trailer on like a bladed jig, swim jig, spinner bait, any type of bait that you're going to want to be winding or cranking works great as a trailer and this trailer hit the surface in 2014 as part of the bruiser bait lineup and has been outperforming all the other trailers on the market ever since guys you have to check out the evil twin a must-have trailer gotta put these in your boat all right how many of y'all love fishing frogs you know i know Frog fishing is my all-time favorite way to catch them on the surface. Just the jaw-dropping explosion that you get when that big bass comes up from underneath and just crushes that frog. The adrenaline rush you get from that is just unbelievable. Well, that leads us into our next bait. We're going to talk a little bit about the kicking frog. Alright guys, this here is the kicking frog. But I want you to pay close attention to the Colorado blade shaped feet on this frog now with those feet the the water displacement the vibration that those feet's gonna give off is unbelievable off the charts they will draw that strike from 15 20 even 30 feet away just because the way those those that paddle tail feet just churn on this frog an unbelievable frog and this frog you have to have in your tackle box no doubt about it you know, if you like to fish frogs, this is a frog you want to have in the boat. The the unbelievable explosion you're going to get with this frog is just off the charts. The kicking frog. That was the kicking frog. Now, let's talk about huh, the kicking frog on steroids. Guys, this is the kicking king. Now check out the kicking king. But the the larger profile of this bait, and again, I want you to pay close attention to the Colorado blade shaped feet on the kicking king. Now this is a lot larger profile than the kicking frog, but the water displacement that you're actually going to get with the kicking king is going to be three to four times the amount of water displacement, the amount of water noise, surface noise you're going to get with this bait because of the enhanced size of the bait. But guys, and again, the explosion, the jaw dropping adrenaline rush you're going to get when that big bass comes up from behind and just annihilates and crushes the kicking king. Guys, big baits, big bass. The kicking king, you gotta have this bait in your boat. A giant killer right there if you love frog fishing. All right, moving right along, let's go to the McMinnow. Now, this here is the McMinnow. Check this out right here. Now, this bait could be rigged several different ways. You can rig this bait on the Bruiser Net Hook is one way. Um, another couple ways you can rig this bait is it works great on a drop shot. It also works great in Nico style. Now, this particular bait is formulated with a floating rubber, which, with that being said, when this bait hits the bottom, it'll actually help it stand up on the bottom. So as you're bouncing it along, it actually mimics a feeding bait fish as it's bouncing along the bottom, feeding on the, the plankton or whatever it's feeding on on the bottom. 
You know, but my favorite way to throw this bait is using it as a trailer on our chat down lower micro jigs. So that's the McMeadow. Again, the Bruiser Net Hook, Nico style, drop shot, use it as a trailer. This bait works great. All right, guys and girls, we're down to the last few baits. The next bait on our list is the Diamond Tail. Now, I want you to check out this Diamond Tail. Check that out. Now, the Diamond Tail is actually one of my all-time go-to finesse baits. All right, this bait can be uh, thrown in several different ways. You can throw it on a Texas rig, Carolina rig, it, throw it on a shaky head, or a drop shot. All four techniques works great with the Diamond Tail. You know, this bait is actually also designed to when it hits the bottom, that tail will stand in an upright position. Any little uh, twitch with your rod tip will cause this tail to wiggle, shake, and shimmy. Anything in the area that's actually eyeballing this bait, it will make them go wild and crazy. And don't listen to the boat ramp chatter about finesse baits. Finesse baits also catch giant bass. The diamond tail is living proof of that, guys. That's the diamond tail. All right, next let's talk about the Banger 110 jerk bait. Now, check this out, guys. That is the Banger 110, all right? Now, the Banger 110, for all you tournament anglers, uh, makes a great search tool for when you're pre-fishing for a tournament, when you're practicing for a tournament. With this bait, you cover a lot of water, you cover a lot of water quickly, but the key word is when you cover a lot of water quickly, you want to cover it thoroughly as well. This bait allows you to do that. You can fish it quick, but thorough. Now, what's the first thing you do when you buy a new crankbait, a new jerkbait, a new topwater lure? I know the first thing I do is I always check the hooks out. And typically, I'll actually change all the hooks out of a brand new bait. This bait here, when you buy the Banger 110, it comes with the best hooks already packaged. It's going to come with three super ultra sharp Mustad hooks in the package. All right, one last thing about the Banger 110. It's designed with an internal weight transfer system. That's gonna do two different things for you. That's gonna give you further distance on your casting, and it's gonna help enhance a suspended action as you work the bait. And you wanna use a rod with a nice polybolical tip on this bait, like a crankbait rod. This bait does have three treble hooks on it, just like any crankbait. You don't wanna use a rod too stiff of a tip, where when the fish eats it, it's gonna rip the bait away from it or rip the hooks out of it. That nice polybolical tip, fight the fish, you'll stay pegged till you get it in the boat. So anyway guys, that is the Banger 110. A great, great search tool, especially if you're a tournament angler, pre-fishing or practicing for tournaments. Alright, we are down to the last couple baits, and there's a reason we put these last couple baits at the end. You know what? I'm a Carolina rig fisherman. When I am fishing offshore, and if I had to guess at a number, I would say 90% of the time I'm going to have a Carolina rig in my hand. Not all the time, but the majority of the time I'll have a Carolina rig in my hand. Especially, uh, especially when I'm guiding with my guide trips, when we're offshore, usually we're going to have Carolina rigs, we're going to be tossing the Carolina rigs around. Now, this next bait we're going to talk about, I have jacked with my guide trips so many giants in the past three, four years um, is unbelievable. So we're gonna dive into this. First bait we're gonna talk about is the 10 inch curly tail. All right guys, check this out. This is the 10 inch curly tail right there. All right. Now the 10 inch curly tail, you can fish it several different ways. The most popular way to rig this bait is gonna be Texas rig. Uh, you could also throw it with the peg uh, a flat out tungsten nose weight as well. But again, my favorite is always going to be the Carolina rig. Um, awesome, awesome Carolina rig bait. And, and again, uh, if you follow my social media platforms, go to my Facebook page. Uh, uh, follow me on Facebook. You'll look at a lot of the posts we have made over the past uh, four or five years. Uh, all the pictures of the big fish we're holding up. The majority of them came on the 10 inch curly tail in the next couple baits we're going to be talking about. But anyway, that's the 10 inch curly tail. If you fish offshore structure, if you like fishing a Carolina rig, guys, trust me when I tell you this, you have to have the 10 inch curly tail in your boat. Proof's in the pudding. Go to my social media platforms and check out the big fish that we have caught with this bait. It's a must have if you like fishing deep water Carolina rig fishing. All right, now, <laughs> All right, we are going to dive into a couple of the biggest, baddest baits that you'll ever have tied on. You know, about six years ago, and 
you know, I guess it's been about six years. Uh, it, it almost seems like they've been around forever. Uh, we'll just call it about six years ago. It's pretty close. About six years ago, Bruiser Bait came out with, in, in my eyes, the best giant bass bait uh, really ever made in a soft plastic. And, uh, well, you know what? Let's, let's just go ahead and dive into this first bait right here. All right, the first one we're going to show you, this is the V1 Duh Big Nasty. All right. This bait is 14.25 inches, 14 and a quarter inches of really pure nastiness. One of the most versatile soft plastic baits I've ever seen in a large profile. Uh, this bait can be fished so many different ways. You can fish it weightless. Uh, you can swim it. You can pitch it. You can toss it. You can cast it. You can use it with a peg to nose weight. But my all-time favorite way to fish this bait is fishing deep water structure on a Carolina rig. You know what, if, if you want to really actually be able to visibly see what I'm talking about, go to my YouTube channel, Norman Lee Fishing, and check out, we have a lot of video out there on this bait, the V1 Big Nasty, and uh, on nothing but catching giant fish, deep water structure. But anyway, guys, if you are a deep water fisherman, if you love to fish a Carolina rig out deep, you have to have this bait in your boat. And trust me when I tell you this, if you throw this bait, you use it on a Carolina rig, get ready to get your arms broke because you're going to jack some giants with it. So anyway, the Big Nasty V1. Alright, now, about, I guess it was about three years ago. About three years ago, uh, Bruiser Bait came out with, well, I guess we could call it the second coming of the Big Nasty. And uh, this here, and let's just go ahead and dive into this one. We're going to show you this real quick. This is the Big Nasty, or hang on, hang on. I said that wrong. It's Duh, Big Nasty V2. V2 meaning the second version of the original B -na uh, Big Nasty. All right. Now, the Big Nasty... Duh, V2 comes in two different sizes. This one here we're showing you is the 14 inch, also comes in a 10 inch. So the V2 they actually make in two different sizes, 14 inch and 10 inch. But I want you to show you something that separates this bait apart from really any other soft plastic large worm on the market, including the V1. I want you to check out that tail. Alright? Now if you if you look closely at that tail, the ribs that, that kind of uh, go down each side of this tail. Those ribs will displace so much more water than any large soft plastic bait you're ever going to throw. Okay? Just the water displacement alone that those ribs on each side of that tail gives off is just unbelievable. But another thing with that tail, if you notice, that tail is almost more or less shaped in a corkscrew. Alright? So when you're swimming this bait, whether you're swimming it or Carolina rigging and pulling it along the bottom on a Carolina rig, with the way that tail is designed with that cork shoot screw shape it's going to actually give off a, a heck of a lot better action the way that tail is good, just going to come alive when you're swimming it on the bottom or uh, through, through the water column but that tail will come alive guys and with the cork screw tail com combined with the ribs going down the side of that tail just the unbelievable water displacement it's going to give off and the vibration it's going to give off and just to give you an idea uh, uh, you know the difference in the two tails? The one right here is the V1. This one right here is the V2. And you can see the, the two different uh, style tails. The V2 actually has the corkscrew more design with the ribs going down the side of it. Where the V1 is more commonly shaped, similar to a lot of your other soft plastic large baits. But I tell you what, both of them, whether you have the V1, or the V2. They both catch giants. They both catch them off the charts. And trust me when I tell you this, again, if you use these on a Carolina rig, better get ready to get your arms broke because you are going to jack some giants. Alright guys, that is the V1 Big Nasty and the V2 Big Nasty. You have to have these baits in your boat. If you're a deep water structure fisherman, love to fish a Carolina rig, you can't hit the lake without these baits in your boat. Okay guys, that is it in a nutshell. That is every bruiser bait that you will never catch me on the lake without having in my boat. I will never leave the boat garage without these baits in my boat. You know, here's the thing. 
If you're an existing Bruiser Bait customer and have used Bruiser Baits and are using Bruiser Baits right now, you kind of know what I'm talking about. You know what the buzz is about. Okay, if you have not used Bruiser Baits yet, if you're a brand new Bruiser Bait customer or uh, have not used them to this point, I suggest that you get out and try them. But here's the thing, go to www.bruiserbaits.com and also their sister company, www.bassaddictiongear.com. Make sure you use that discount code DECTOP10 for your instant savings. But what I suggest you do if you're a brand new Bruiser Bait customer or not used to using Bruiser Baits yet, Here's the thing, there's one thing about uh, trying new baits. Anybody could get up here and tell you how they work for them, uh, how good these baits are, how many fish these baits catch, but until you get out and try it yourself, you are not going to know what the buzz is about, you're not going to know what I'm talking about. So what I suggest you do, go to their website, and whatever baits you want to try, go ahead and buy a regular pack of them okay because I am so confident in what I'm preaching to you that when you buy a regular pack and see how good they work and how good they work for you just like myself you're gonna be back and you're gonna buy a 50 or 100 count bag the next time you go to the website so guys go to Bruiser Baits website bruiserbaits.com www.bruiserbaits.com and www.bassaddictiongear.com and don't forget, make sure you use that discount code at checkout, DECTOP10, for your instant savings at checkout. Guys, that's about it. We're going to call it a wrap. Um, I hope everybody enjoys the day. Tight lines. And guys, live the passion. And make sure you get some of those bruiser baits. And we're done.